Hey, good morning and welcome to Kids Ministry Online. I am so excited to be here this morning. You know, usually I only get to preach on Sunday mornings in church, but I've been trying so hard to make it onto the kids ministry team. And so I've been preaching the very best I can on Sunday mornings, hoping that just maybe if I tried really hard and did a really good job, Miss Ashley would let me work with kids ministry. And today I get my big chance. It's my big chance. And so I get to do the intro video. Now I have been working on this all week, just thinking about how to do it and do it right. They said that I should do it somewhere where it looks like fun and friendly. So I picked my backyard and, and then they said that I should wear some Valley Life gear. And so I have my Valley Life hat on. And so I'm super excited, but I gotta tell you a secret kids. I can't remember exactly what I'm supposed to say. I know that we're doing a new series and that we just started it last week and it's something that has to do with some kind of a food of the spirit but you guys got to do me a favor don't tell teacher Ashley that I forgot what kind of food it is I, I just been thinking and thinking and thinking but I, I just can't remember and so I was wondering if you guys could help me out in the chat I'm gonna try some different kinds of food of the spirit this morning and when we get to the one that we're supposed to be doing can you guys just yell in the chat and let me know that I figured out the right one and whatever you do don't tell Miss Ashley about it so I didn't know maybe it was the vegetable of the spirit is it the vegetable of the spirit? that doesn't sound right but but vegetables are good but I don't think that that's it so I don't think it's the vegetable of the spirit or maybe it was the candy of the spirit uh, yesterday miss Penny went to the store and she brought home this candy and I was thinking maybe the candy of the spirit that sure sounds good but I don't know if it's the candy of the spirit I don't think that's right either but maybe it's the dairy product of the spirit like like milk maybe it's the dairy product of the spirit so but it's it just doesn't seem right and, and I know if you guys could just write in the chat what it is I really want to do a good job of this so miss Ashley will let me do more of these things can you just help me out with think what other kind of food could there be oh that's right fruit it's the fruit of the spirit today we're going to be looking at and talking about the fruit of the spirit teacher rachel is going to teach us about a new kind of fruit of the spirit and it's not going to look like a banana like this it's going to be a kind of fruit of the spirit and i'm so excited to learn about it with you and talk to you about it in the chat today so let's get ready for our time together i'm going to just lead us in a quick prayer God, thank you so much uh, for, for making us and thank you so much for loving us and help us today to learn about the fruit of the Spirit. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Hi, kids. My name's Rachel, and today I'm dressed up as one of my favorite Disney characters, Joy from Inside Out. Last week, we started talking about the fruit of the Spirit. Does anyone remember which fruit we talked about? Well, if you do, share it in the chat. I'll give you a couple of clues. It starts with the letter L. There's sort of a holiday dedicated to, you, to it. While you're thinking, I'll tell you my real favorite fruit. It's the watermelon. Anyway, that's not the fruit of the spirit, though. The fruit of the spirit that we talked about last week was love. And not just the normal kind of love, the big kind of love from God. A love so big that he sent his only son to die so that we could spend eternity with him in heaven. We had a lot more fruit of the Spirit to talk about too. So if you have your Bibles, open up to Galatians 5, 22 through 26. Remember, Galatians is in the New Testament, so it's kind of towards the back. While you turn there, we're going to talk about one of the next fruits of the Spirit. When you hear it, type it in the chat. Okay, Galatians 5, 22 through 26. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. I know a bunch of you got the name of that fruit of Spirit that we're going to talk about today. It's joy. Joy is such a wonderful fruit of the Spirit. A lot of times we think joy is just another word for happy, but it's so much more than that. It's bigger than the emotion that can go up and down. I want us to learn more about the kind of joy that we can have by being a part of God's chosen family. And the best way I know how to do that is to look in the Bible. 
If any of you know a verse that has to do with joy, share it in the chat. You can write where it's found or just part of it or the whole verse. Even if you can't, can't, can't quite remember the whole thing. You all are so smart and I know many of you have knowledge to write some of this. While you're looking, I'm gonna share one of my favorite verses about joy. Maybe you'll also write, um, find this verse. That'd be super cool. So one of my favorites is in James. James is also in the New Testament, so it's more towards the back. James 1, 2 says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Hard times, an opportunity for joy? What on earth? This right here proves joy is so much bigger than just a feeling of being happy. When things didn't go our way, or when we're struggling through a problem, we usually aren't very happy about it. But James tells us it's an opportunity for great joy. Joy doesn't come easy during trials, during difficult seasons of life. It's so much easier to get carried away with worry and anxiety. But God gives us a better way. Even with our struggles, we can express pure joy in choosing to silence those inner voices and listen to God. When you admit that you're a sinner, that you make mistakes and do things that God doesn't want, like, and you believe that Jesus died to pay those prices for our mistakes and then rose again, and you confess your belief out loud, you become part of God's chosen family and are filled with the Holy Spirit. Being part of God's family doesn't mean that everything will go exactly how you want it for the rest of your life. When we follow Jesus, we still make mistakes and face hard times. But when you have bad days, we also have the hope and trust that God is with us. And because of our relationship with God, we can find joy in even the hardest times. Did you catch that when we become a part of God's family, what we get? We get filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a part of God and we are filled with that. That alone is reason to be joyful. Let's keep looking in the scripture to learn more about this. Will you read 1 Peter 6 through 8 with me? So be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Christ Jesus is revealed to the whole world. You love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him. And you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. It can be tough when we're living in the world and God feels really far away sometimes. We sometimes want something we can actually touch and cling to. That's why we have the Bible. We can read the scriptures to reassure us that there is more to life than just what's in front of us and things that we can touch. God is here, right here, right here now. The guy who made the whole world, he created every animal, every tree, every person, you, me, that guy is right here this very second. And he loves you so, so much. Believing and knowing in the depths of our souls with all our heart fills us with joy unspeakable, so overwhelmingly wonderful that there aren't words to express the amount of happiness. Okay, let's check out another piece of scripture that talks about joy. This one's in the Old Testament, so at the front of the Bible, in the book of Nehemiah. We're going to read just a little bit of the story, but I want to set the scene for you first. A bunch of people are gathered together and they asked this guy Ezra to bring out scripture that he had and read to them. They hadn't ever heard um, it or taught, had it taught to them. Oh boy, the first time people get to hear the word of God would be such a reason for joy. Let's read what happens in chapter 8 verse 8 through 10. They read from the book of the law of God and clearly explain the meaning of what was being read, helping the people understand each passage. Then Nehemiah, the governor, Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who were interpreting for the people said to them, don't mourn or weep on such a day as this. 
For today is a sacred day before the Lord your God. For the people had all been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. And Nehemiah, Nehemiah continued, Go and celebrate with a feast of rich foods and sweet drinks, and share gifts of food with people who have nothing prepared. This is a sacred day before our Lord. Don't be dejected and sad, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Knowing God is who he says he is, it's great. Believing God will do what he says he can do is also good. But the joy of the Lord is something you experience to gain strength. Sure, we love the feeling of joy, but it's more powerful than we could even fathom. When we find our joy in the Lord, this joy isn't something that just brings us happiness or even contentment. It can be a source of strength in our lives. It helps keep us steady no matter what may come our way. Joy is not a wimpy piece of fruit. It's a big, deep, and strong fruit. We can experience joy when we know that God, God is God. He is our joy, and more we know him, the greater our joy becomes. We can experience joy when we read God's word. In his word, we discover his truth, his promise, and who he is. We can experience joy when we remember how much God loves us, how he thinks we are important, and that we matter to him. And we can experience joy when we remember the hope we have spending eternity with God and without suffering and sadness in heaven. But just like a real piece of fruit, there are things we need to help our joy grow. We have to spend time with God. We need to talk to him, which is prayer, learn about him by reading the Bible and talking with other believers like we're doing right now. We can confidently quote Habakkuk 3.18. No matter what our day has brought, we can say, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. I'm going to rejoice in the Lord right now by singing loud. Would you all join me? Hey, Valley Life kids. We are going to sing Only King Forever with you guys. We want you to join us. Y'all ready? Yeah. yeah. Here we go. I've got a firm foundation. I'll rock the only solid ground. Stations rise and fall. One strong now shaken We trust forever in your name In the name of Jesus We trust in the name of Jesus Cause you are the only king forever Almighty God, yes you are You are the only king forever Forevermore, you are victorious I'm matched Oh wow, what a great morning that was. I don't know about you guys, but I just got done singing so loud and it was super fantastic. It is such a great reminder that God created everything in the earth and he also created me and that gives me a source of great joy that God loves me like that.
You know, this week it was so fun to look at all the different scriptures that were being put in the chat and that were mentioned in the in our time together. And I want to challenge you this week to get into God's Word, to look at some of those verses and think about the joy that that will bring to you this week. And I so much look forward to seeing you back here again next week. In just a little while, they're going to let me preach in big church too. And I hope if I do a good job, I can keep working in kids ministry online. But don't forget, don't tell Miss Ashley that I forgot the script earlier. All right, let's pray together. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this time that we could get together. Thank you for uh, bringing us together as a church and as a kids ministry. Lord, help us to, to remember this week to have joy that comes from you. It's in your name that we pray. Amen.